Welcome along to Fujitsu World Tour London. The theme of this year's event is driving a trusted future. Now, the rapid evolution of new technology, new structures, new ecosystems brings about a few questions, doesn't it? How do we deliver that digital transformation, proving value back to the business, our colleagues, our customers, society at large? There's a few questions to answer there. Well, we've got you back this year at Fujitsu World Tour. We're going to help you identify the mix of partners, technologies, skills and solutions to deliver on all of those queries. Up next, we are talking breakthrough innovations. And with me, to hopefully bring clarity to the cloudy world of IT jargon, we're joined by Dr. David Snelling, who's the Program Director for Artificial Intelligence here at Fujitsu, uh, Chris Pilling, Principal Consultant for Fujitsu Digital Business Services, and Mark McAlpine, the EMEA Head of Sales for Digital Enabler at Fujitsu. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming along and having a chat with us today. Chris, I, I'll start with you if we can. Um, but I'm keen to get all of your, your opinions on this. Digital disruption, it's an overused word. What do we believe is the common definition of disruptive technology? It starts with, if you're still thinking inside or outside of the conceptual box, you're not being disruptive. You get to the point of disruption where you throw away the box, forget about the box and start again you really do start with a, a clear mind, a blank slate, on what you're doing, why you're doing it, and who will benefit from it. That, to me, is when you get to the point of, of being on the edge of disruption. So to truly do that, do you have to uh, take away any opinion that you may have of technology, looking at business problems to determine what's going to be right and how you move forward? D definitely. And, and in my experience, and what I truly believe is, again, to get to the point of really being able to disrupt, you need to almost forget what you've done. Put, put legacy technology, put existing technology in a, in a frame and, and, and understand it, but then really move away from it and think purely about what your customers need, what your partners need and want and expect of you and how you can play to that need and, and form ideas and form solutions, form capability around that demand. About the innovations that have come out of disruptive technology and what are we seeing what, what's out out there at the moment that we should be looking at so so from my perspective i think that the velocity of business is changing you know in large enterprise our customers expect much more from us than, than what they ever did before and the legacy of doing things the, the legacy way of doing things is probably no longer fit for purpose you know, we're seeing a world where we have many more complex problems that we need to solve. And some of the uh, technologies that Dave will touch on in, in a second are around our quantum-inspired offering. So being able to co solve complex stochastic problems and complex stochastic models very, very quickly is becoming more important across industry, especially when you look into financial services, for example, where the combination of assets you could have in a portfolio is a, it's a massive number, and it's a very difficult problem, very difficult problem to solve. So when I look at the digital annealer, I see that as a real innovation and a real technology disruption going forward. I, I, I should say, if you're picking up any of the music on the uh, the cameras, <laughs> the keynote has just started next door. This isn't dramatic soundtrack for our our benefit. Uh, World tours uh, in full flow now. Um, Dr. Snelling, let's talk AI. I know it's an area of expertise for you. A bit of scepticism out there at the moment. Some people think it's the great next thing. Others have fear about it. What's Fujitsu doing to help breed confidence and trust into the application of AI? Well, like with any disruptive technology, artificial intelligence will have some disruptive effects. We're not, um, we're not going to paint a, a glassy field for you and say this is all roses out there. There will be some changes. There is some reason to be concerned about changes in the business practices, changes in the way in which people need skill sets developed and so forth. What we do inside Fujitsu, first of all, is in the, the way in which we approach artificial intelligence is to look at ways that the application of AI can augment the human element in the business rather than replace it. And so there's a big element of a lot of the work we've done where we're looking to take the, the tedium out of what people do. Uh, the best example, for example, is the um, wind power blade manufacturing, eight hours staring at squiggly lines to find out if this is a place he needs to inspect or not is no good. If the AI can say, here's one hour of really hard stuff to look at, please look at that. That saves a person eight hours of, of boring work, not eight hours of his job. They're still there. They still have work to do. So that's one of the terrifying areas is job losses. There will be changes, but it's not, it's not the end of, end of employment as we see it.
So it's, that's an interesting point. I hear this a lot doing interviews uh, around the business with Fujitsu. This isn't about taking away jobs, but freeing up minds to go and take on other tasks and, and, and empower workforces to go and do other things. That's right, isn't it? Yep. yep, yep. And uh, Fujitsu leads in that in our own internal example with very deep retraining programs and um, education programs and support for incoming staff and so forth. So it is, is something that we do ourselves and we're ready to do and help our customers do as well. There's been this explosion of data. Increasingly, we're hearing more about quantum computing. Um, what can we expect for quantum, from quantum, should I say, over the next couple of years? So over the next couple of years, I don't think very much, Dave. I don't think it's ready. No, it's not ready. No, Not, not for five to 10 years yeah. minimum. Yeah. So, so, it, so it's not ready. So for Fujitsu, it's all about bridging the gap to quantum. It's all about solving problems that were unsolvable or computationally challenging um, until very recently. So computationally challenging to me before I started this job is something that might have taken two weeks or, or a month or, or six months. But actually computationally challenging is a, is a problem that's solvable, but it might take a million years to solve. And, and with the digital annealer in certain circumstances, we can run that problem and we can solve it very, very quickly. So coming back to financial services with a portfolio of assets, being able to very quickly rebalance that portfolio of up to 500, 1,000 assets um, in, in less than a second in many, many cases. And that allows our customers to take advantage of um, their competition and that they can rebalance very quickly. They can react very quickly to changes in the market. And that's a real example of the bridge to quantum and what Fujitsu can, can do today. It's a perfect segue. You mentioned financial services. Let's talk blockchain for a second. One of the breakthrough technologies over the last couple of years. Um, where do we think the efficiencies are going to come beyond financial services with, with blockchain? I remember at Forum hearing some examples within public sector and healthcare. What, what do we think we're going to be seeing? For me, it's any situation, any business context, that uses and relies on transactions. Blockchain as a technology is all about recording and leveraging and using transactions. Um, transition of state, timestamp of event, transfer of value. Um, the whole concept of supply chain and supply chains uses this very core concept of, of transactions between multiple parties that have no trust between each other. They, in fact, in, in almost all situations, the competitors but blockchain allows each of these competitive elements, these organizations, to see and share and look and use data in a way that's completely safe. No one party can tamper or delete or edit or impact on any of the data. And the, and the central entity within the supply chain can use this power to optimize, automate and streamline lots of things that are going wrong with supply chains and also invent new capability, new processes that come off the back of this technology. So supply chain is, is a great area for us to think about with blockchain. The construction industry, for many of the same reasons, um, the whole construction sector is, is rapidly opening up to us um, as a marketplace for blockchain because there's so many moving parts, people, parts, machines, um, plans that are in motion and we record these transactions and surface them to different parties that can use them for invoicing, payment, transitioning from, from one part of a project to another part of a project, alerting someone to do something or notifying someone that something has happened. So anything that involves these moving entities is, is a really good landscape for thinking about blockchain technology. I'm keen to get all of your answers on this next question. Uh, where do we think, well, disruptive technology-wise, what do we think we're going to see the biggest impact or the greatest growth from over the next sort of five-year window, what do you think? Um, in terms of industries, um, the whole manufacturing and supply chain industries will really come to the front in terms of exploiting the, the quantum inspired that, that Mark and Dave have spoken about, um, equally blockchain, and then, the for me, the, the overarching layer of artificial intelligence will, will bring all these individual elements together into something very coherent that, that has great meaning for, for manufacturers. What do you think, Mark? I think we're going to see a bit of an explosion around quantum-inspired computing. I have to say that because I'm head of sales for EMEA. <laughs> um, but I also think AI, machine learning, and I think having a true decision-making capability within AI and machine learning is something that we'll see over the next over the next few years. I think customers are still very much at the beginning of their journey for AI and machine learning, um, and at its very base level, it's uh, you know it's smart data analytics. So how can we take those smart data analytics? How can we have some kind of hybrid AI where there's a human element at, at the back of it, uh, and how can we take that and leverage it so that we can have 
true decision-making capability. So if you look at it from a customer engagement perspective, being able to uh, c communicate with a chatbot, for example, making sure you're getting the right answer, and then having the responses automated to the extent that the AI can then take a customer on a journey um, rather than having a person do that at the back end. That, that's what I see. Fascinating. Dr. Snelling, what do you think? Well, disruption for me is something, you know, we, we talk about we're at an age of disruption now, and for me that's been going on since the Industrial Revolution. We have always been constantly under uh, an earth-shattering speed of change with everything. And this is just another one of those steps in the continuum. So I'm not, I don't think of disruption as a continuity, but it's a state of mind that businesses have to be in all the time and have had to be in for, for decades, okay, centuries even. Um, what, what's going to hit next, I think, some of it's going to have to do with scale and rapidity. But it's not going to be a technological disruption. It's going to be a disruption in the adaptability of business process. We're going to have to be able to change our business processes more rapidly than we ever imagined. We've talked about you know, agile in software space. We need to have agile in the business space so that our business processes can go through minimal viable product and come out the other side adapting to the technology that's changing around them at, at, well, at, at quantum speed, if you will. I know it's going to be a really tough question. There'll be a lot of CEOs watching this. If you had one message of advice for them, we've covered a lot in the last, I don't know what, five to ten minutes. If you had one piece of advice for the boardroom that's looking at the utilisation of disruptive technology, what would it be? Probably to keep your, keep your CTO close to you because the technology that he or she is tracking is going to change and it's going to change at the business level. So don't hive off your, your information technology or your business or process technology to an individual division. Those kinds of concepts need to be at the board level. Fascinating stuff. But from, from my perspective, I would say that you know, we've changed the way we've engaged. You know, if, if you're a CEO, then listen to your lines of business. Let companies like Fujitsu engage directly with the lines of business. Um, because ultimately, it, it's not necessarily how it works, it, it's what it does especially with something like the digital annealer. It's the type of problem that it can solve. And the only way to get really under the hood of that problem is to engage properly with the line of business and provide the business expertise, and we'll do the rest. Couldn't have put it better myself. Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to come and speak with us today. Well, we promised you inside, didn't we? There was a truck ton there. If you want to hear more, you would like to um, connect with any of our guests, all you need to do is drop us a line on social. We will facilitate even, easy for me to say, we'll facilitate an introduction for you. By the time we finish at Fujitsu World Tour, we would have brought you interviews across AI, blockchain, quantum, security, multi-cloud, innovation, operational excellence, workplace, a trusted future, the connected world, retail, transport, and financial services, no less. All you need to do, go onto the social channels, put in the relevant keyword that's uh, most relevant to your organisation or the curiosity that you have around technology, and we will have a ton of insight coming your way. And that's the aim of the interviews. We said it at the start. We want to help you address those very challenges and questions that you're facing within your organisation right now when it comes to technology. Thanks for watching.